December is testimony to the fact that Kwatu is a best practice example in the use of tourism for good. To give the first peoples of South Africa a voice and to have their voice be heard instead of having their stories be told by someone else, as has been the case for centuries. And then just a reminder that your ancestors come from Africa. So welcome home. Thank you. Thanks very, uh, Danalyn. Thanks for a great presentation. Very, very clear and uh, interesting. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat so that we can refer to them later at the end of this session. And I now would like to call uh, Oysten Jensen, if he is around, for the next presentation. Oysten, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you can hear me and see yes. me? Loud very and good. clear. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> so um, I will try to do like that to make this big, this presentation. How do we get it uh, in a big format? Um, now, this is some. Um, uh, I need to put it in a presentation modus. I uh, thought I had it here. Um, and now let me see. Oh, where is the presentation? <laughs> uh, also, also down, you can also do it down. Yeah. Uh, down here. So next to the book, you will see another icon if you press on that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Um, then we'll. Uh... Okay. Can you see this? It's still not full screen. Um... Is it okay? It is still not full screen, but maybe maybe you start because uh, we have four presentations in one hour. Yeah. So <laughs> here is a full screen. Okay. Uh, so um, this is. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about um, the judgments of um, of authenticity uh, based on uh, uh, a cultural center that somehow many of us know already quite well. It's the Ndere Cultural Center in Kampala. Um, and um, I am, um, yes, yeah, so what, I, what I'm going to, to talk about is um, the, um, uh, the way uh, the uh, cultural performance uh, that is transferred from original community setting to artificial setting, how, uh, how this works when it comes to some of the authenticity aspects. And I will uh, look at the um, performance as uh, understood as an aesthetic experience or performance. And it is important here to distinguish between the cultural elements of the performance and the entertainment elements. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> the case is uh, chosen also because it has a mixed audience of uh, domestic Ugandans and foreign tourists. I will just end up quite open with some uh, findings and uh, some conclusive questions. So um, uh, this type of performance, <clears throat> I mean, it talked about authenticity aspect. We are talking about authenticity, about cultural performance that is intangible type of heritage. And we talk about the setting uh, and what is actually being performed and how it is. So uh, mainly it is about the reconstruction of authenticity. Um, and how can you somehow do a judgment about that. Well, you can use professional skills and knowledge, and even from research from social anthropologists, etc. Alternatively, you may use the people who come from the uh, relevant uh, communities who are socialized in the communities that grown up there. They are supposed to be some kind of uh, expert, local expert, based on their backgrounds. Then we have tourists. Uh, tourists are um, somehow have a limited knowledge. So they are very much um, 
uh, based on a subjective or perceived authenticity type of judgments. What they believe, what they have confidence in, what they think is, sub is, 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 um, is authentic. Uh, very much um, it is just um, the judgments uh, that is, uh, is, is not actually, they're not supposed to be experts and that is the idea. Um, so life cultural performance, when we look at it as an aesthetic experience, <clears throat> we are talking about original rituals and arts and dance and ordinary life that is transformed and changed and given a certain form and brought into play. And what type of issues are we uh, dealing with here? Uh, ordinary life in a village like, that can deal with harvest, occasions and harvest, circumcision, marriage, proposals, funerals, other types of celebrations. And if that is uh, given a form, it is given a very concentrated form. And uh, <clears throat> where a dance that might uh, last for several hours is given a form of 10 minutes version, a concentrated form. So it means actually has to be decoded and has to be decoded by those who are the expert, which might be the villagers as such or uh, uh, professionals. Um, so a performance like this is not assumed to be authentic as such, of course not. The pivotal point is actually the way the cultural ele ele elements are recalled and transmitted in the actual new setting, whether it is done in a sincere way or in a very su superficial way. So tourists are, <clears throat> when it comes to this type of, uh, of settings, are relating mostly to the observable part, what they can see, such as the music, the dance, the costumes that are supposed to be exotic, etc., from their, their point of view. And they have restricted insight into actual meanings. In contrast to local insiders who somehow uh, might have been grown up in those societies, uh, they have community belongings and connectedness. And um, example are uh, traditional dancing in the villages in Uganda that is uh, quite well uh, described by the article of Mabingu 2015. Um, um, and to make a very uh, kind of broad type of uh, distinction between performances, uh, Harding, who writes about the uh, performances and uh, culture in Africa, uh, make a distinction between the retail performance, uh, that is uh, basically the original ones, and popular theater and arts that are a form that is widely liked by common people uh, and are often associated with uh, easily absorbed arts and uh, embracing lots of entertainment elements. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the type of case we are talking about now <clears throat> belong to the latter uh, category. So in the tourism literature, we talk about state authenticity, very critical. Uh, the discourse of authenticity is more a discourse about inauthenticity, very critical in a way. State authenticity, commodification, the tourist gaze, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in, in the context to Smith, he claims that many authors even state that anything that is theatrical is fake as such, which is a very <clears throat> fundamental type of, of approach. Um, but if you read the uh, sociology of tourism and, and anthropology, then it seems to be quite, quite critical and put the level quite high in order to not uh, deal with inauthenticity. So Ndera Cultural Center <clears throat> has, um, as I mentioned, has a performance uh, where the audience is mixed between the same audience, uh, but it's mixed between Ugandans who are domestics uh, and foreigners who are tourists. Well, it's not so easy like that. There might be tourists among the uh, uh, 
the the uh, domestics, uh, the, the Ugandans, there might be some specialists even about the uh, the, uh, the the foreigners, but still keeping that that uh, <clears throat> distinction, it still gives some meaning. It gives us also gave meaning when when I looked at the uh, uh, the data that I had. Um, so. <clears throat> As I say, many of you have already experienced this in the agricultural center because uh, at the Atlas conference uh, tw tw uh, twice in, in uh, Kampala, uh, we were visiting this center. Uh, so um, it is a um, three hours um, show uh, that uh, there is a running buffet. Uh, there is um, dances from different parts of Uganda, different communities, uh, and um, you may say it's done in a very, uh, uh, very, uh, you may say, uh, entertaining way, as it still also keeps very much to uh, the traditions, um, and it is led by the uh, uh, the uh, choreographer, the uh, arts di director Stephen Rangesi. Um, so here are the uh, details about it. But uh, since we don't have so much time, I'll try to. Go on. Um, you have, you have not uh, moved your slides because it's still on the same slide for the last 10 minutes. My God. <laughs> but okay, you have uh, five more minutes, so maybe you, you move oh, it to how, the... How is, how, is that, how is that possible? Yeah, well, we, we, uh, I see only one uh, slide 15 to 17 uh, okay. on my screen. Uh, how is that possible? It doesn't, but otherwise, otherwise, just yeah, make, make your point maybe. And uh, it is uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> How is that possible? Okay. Um, all right. I I I take it. Uh, then I take it just like that. So uh, <clears throat> let us. Well, it's a very it's, it's a pity because I wanted to show uh, an example of uh, uh, a performance in original setting, which is done in the uh, Busoga, the Busoga culture, which is done in the village of Bugiri. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, what I wanted to show you was the way the villagers are uh, playing the xylophone, the 10 people around that, and uh, they are dancing, the Busoga dancing. <clears throat> they are dancing and playing for each other and bringing messages for for each other and to to uh, to uh, <clears throat> well from and to each other. And somehow it's a kind of communication. All these things about the music and the dancing is a communication within the village. As in the uh, in at um, the agricultural center, we will see that uh, uh, we will just see that. There are dancers that are dancing to us, towards us. There is there are musicians who are playing with microphones, etc. And the setting is quite different, but still, uh, it is claimed that uh, they are keeping to the main, um, to the main uh, uh, traditions, to the main procedures, uh, in in a quite sincere way. And um, uh, among the Ugandan. Um, uh, uh, audience, uh, you got lots of confirmation about the uh, that this is actually um, com uh, com com conform with the uh, with the original. Um, so <clears throat> then I just have to tell you <laughs> what the uh, what the uh, interviews says. Um, so. I, I, I just, when it comes to authenticity, like one Ugandan male says that when we are sitting here, we really relate to the village. It is just that it's, it is in another setting. A female Ugandan says that I'm present there in her own village. Uh, another one say it's authentic, but there's a kind of innovations. So um, this is uh, many of the Ugandans, some uh, claim that, uh, the performances are very much um, authentic. They actually recognize that, but this, they still uh, see that it is, it's another setting and there is some innovation, some spicing, but it is accepted. 
more or less that's a main trend as for example foreigners i will say i will take the most extreme one is a german lady who had been there for for one week and she said i think it is just made for tourists actually for white tourists i think they are doing a show uh, it is not what they do in the villages so she somehow is very critical to the uh, performance because it's too entertaining um so um i think i will jump over these um the other parts and just see say that uh, it's, it's a pity that you cannot see this but uh, um uh, i will also say something about <clears throat> the role of the uh, uh of the showmaster the uh, Steven Rangesi, who is running the show. Uh, among the Ugandans, it's a very positive uh, attitude to his role as an entertainment entertainer. Uh, at the same time, they say he's promoting the culture in a sincere way. As the uh, foreigners are more skeptic about uh, that he's entertaining, he's, they think that, <clears throat> for example, this German lady said, he's, he's performing like a clown. So that is not, that cannot be a, a good thing. Um, so <clears throat> let me just uh, conclude with the, uh, some of the findings that the domestic audience have a more positive experience of, of the authenticity of the cultural elements and the foreigners. And among the foreigners, they rely on what they believe and they can believe anything. Uh, and among the foreigners again, entertainment elements are perceived as an uh, indication of inauthenticity. So we can then ask some questions by the end, if it is time. Um, based on the dominant views in the tourism, particular tourism sociology literature, are we demanding too much of the life cultural performances regarding the authentic reconstruction of these type of performances? Are we too dogmatic? Number two, does entertainment really signify inauthenticity of the cultural elements of it? And number three, um, the domestic um, uh, audiences, I mean, in Africa, in this type, in uh, you talk about the Ugandans, do they have a higher tolerance for the entertainment elements? And might it be due to their confidence with the cultural parts that makes them more relaxed, that they somehow can accept that uh, entertainment can also come in addition without disturbing the cultural part. And the, the last one is, um, can we somehow see that um, if the Ugandan, uh, the domestic audience uh, dominating, dominantly are positive to the, um, to the authenticity of the reconstruction, can we see this as a kind of verification from experts, those who are, those who know? Um, well, this were, uh, this was what I was going to talk about. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about the... Uh... Thanks very much, Austin. Um, let me put on my video. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, it's a pity that um, for, for whatever reasons your slides uh, didn't move. Uh, but as you said, uh, some of us have a clear picture of uh, this cultural center as we have visited uh, at, uh, twice at the uh, Atlas conferences. Uh, I hope at the end of this session, we can come back to some of your points about um, uh, the, the, the difference between, for instance, domestic and foreign tourists uh, and the way they perceive this, uh, this site, etc. But I would like to call now uh, Justinia uh, Adamus and uh, Thomas, uh, uh, sorry, Thomas Kepsky for their presentation. The floor is yours, please. Yes. Hello. You, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Professor. Dear Prelegans and all attendants, it is uh, very nice to, uh, to be here with you. Uh, um, all right. I hope the screen is easily visible for you right now. Uh, yes, very right. clear, very clear. 
Great. Uh, my name is Tomasz Kepski, and uh, uh, together with my colleague Justyna Adamus from Jagiellonian University, Krakow, Poland, uh, we will have a great pleasure to present you the extraordinary relationship between the tribal community and the safari tourism business. Uh, and our case study will be Samburu region in uh, Kenya. So the aim of our presentation is to indicate the socio-economic relationship between the indigenous community of Samburu and the safari lodge in northern Kenya. Uh, the research problem is to define the determinants which decide about the uh, effectivity of functioning this safari lodge and also decide about the tribal community support for this safari lodge uh, activity. The relationship between the tribal community and the tourism business can be found in literature in global context. It is worth to point out that the, the relation is the basis for building a tourism value chain that is provided to tourists. Uh, the main field of the discussion on the distribution of economic benefits from tourism development uh, especially among representatives of local communities are determined by the geographical context its forms as well as mechanisms of including or excluding uh, the local population uh, from the benefits caused by the tourism expenses. And there are also many considerations in the literature on sustainable tourism as an effective tool to eliminate poverty. One of the goals uh, of sustainable tourism is to encourage social, economic and ecological tourism to alleviate poverty by providing growth on uh, jobs for people living on less than one dollar a day. So far, the issue of a sustainable tourism uh, on the, and the social functions of tourism in the contents, uh, context of the local community have not been discussed in detail in relation to the African touristic objects with such extraordinary specificities with uh, which are influenced by uh, spatial uh, isolation, natural environment uniqueness, and of course, cultural uniqueness resulting from the authenticity of the Samburu ethnic group. Uh, focusing now uh, on our uh, case study, Samburu County is characterized by arid and semi-arid lands in northern part of Kenya, uh, and the Desert Rose Lodge located in the northern part of this county is operating as a safari tourism lodge. Uh, it is located peripherally in a hardly accessible mountain area of Ngiro, and this is a very unique place and the only facility in this region providing tourism services for high-end clients. Uh, due to its peripheral geographic location and semi-isolation, the facility is even difficult to, to access by road. Uh, the vast majority of the population in this county is Samburu people, over 300,000 members of this tribe. And what you can also see in the graph that Samburu population is very young with an equal number of uh, male uh, and female. Uh, Samburu people are generally semi-nomads and their everyday life is determined by the grazing of animals resistant to the long-term droughts. Uh, the leaders of the Samburu community are men and the group of the men is organized according to the age system. The power system is gerontographic, so the elders have a full tribal power, uh, uh, which is related to their belief in curses. Community living in the uh, vicinity of the lodge belongs to the Wasurongai village. They have preserved the traditional way of life uh, in a strong connection with nature. Uh, this population generally is poorly educated. Now I would like to uh, very briefly ca characterize the uh, lodge itself. So Desert Rose Lodge uh, has 16 beds in seven high class uh, open space facilities lunch area with a pool, own airstrip, and four helipads. The guests are provided with a full board accommodation, transport, natural walks, guide services, and, uh, and cultural experience. Uh, the lodge is, uh, 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 I find uh, quite uh, important to mention that the lodge is owned by the private uh, entrepreneur and it is uh, not affiliated to any organization. 
Um, the Safari Lodge uh, activates the local community in a direct and indirect way. Uh, direct includes permanent work where 18 people from the local Samburu community find employment. And it is also worth to mention that four uh, employees belong to the um, Kikuyu tribe because the work of uh, these people ensure the proper functioning and quality of services provided to the guests. Uh, lodge guests can purchase uh, handicraft products made by people from the uh, Wasurungai village and um, the funds go directly to this uh, community. Uh, people from the community also can find uh, occasional jobs at the lodge, such as uh, dancing and singing for tourists, um, as well as um, protecting the lodge. Um, in addition to the above, the entrepreneur also pays to elders so-called Samburu Village Development Fund, which is kind of community grant. It's uh, $20 for each person overnight. Um, indirect forms are mainly CSR projects, uh, which are founding by the lodge or by the lodge visitors and include, um, for example, solar lamps to each household, uh, installing pipeline that supplies the local school with, school with drink water, um, ed educational materials, uh, supplies for dispensary or founding to students' uh, scholarships. Um, the development of the facility is strongly dependent on the local natural conditions, as well as the consent of, of the tribal elders, which are part of the community. Uh, to rule the community, um, elders are using two strategies, discussion and curses. Usually small problems are discussed in a small group of elders, while serious problems or conflicts are discussed in a series of meetings. Um, we are discussing in detail the issue related to the elders um, because uh, maintaining good relations with elders is the key for the functioning of the lodge. Um, building relationships uh, with the elders and community takes place in the form of cyc uh, cyclical meetings with the elders. Uh, however, reaching an agreement with the Samburu elders on issues that disrupt the established tradition, such as um, cattle grazing or the use of uh, natural resources um, is extremely difficult and they are uh, reluctant to change. Um, so the question arises, is this relationship a partnership or clash? Um, the balance of power relations between them is kept through the exchange of benefits. Regarding Safari Lodge, there are mainly economic and social benefits, while from the elders, it is a permission uh, for the uh, Safari Lodge to operate in their territory and the belief that the value of the benefits provided by the entrepreneur is um, adequate to the costs of cultural change borne by the local community. Um, in this slide, we showed the model of the lodge uh, relationship with the local community, which in general follows from the above information. Um, this relationship, uh, relationship is a, a mutual agreement. Its, uh, symbiot uh, its symbiotic nature results from the uh, mutual benefits of cooperation um, because they need each other, but also the lodge uh, has become an inseparable element of everyday life of this society. It has been uh, embedded in the local system of this traditional community and the relationship between the lodge and the uh, local community strives for a balance. There are many examples in the literature where the development of tourism dominates and make the local community um, like dependent on itself. But in this case, um, this is a, a reverse relationship. The economic entity cannot do anything without the consent of the elders. We find here, um, for example, lack of freedom in uh, managing uh, employees, a lack of freedom uh, with explo uh, exploiting nature and um, with shaping space in the vicinity of the lodge, as well as constant good relations with the elders. Um, they often uh, wonder about the ethical uh, intentions of the entity located in their territory. Otherwise, the elders can use um, curses or social ostracism against the lodge uh, employees and even uh, uh, on the individuals in the community 
who um, generally has something to do with the uh, with the lodge. Um, thus, we would like to present the factors that, in our opinion, determine this relationship from the perspective of the lodge uh, community um, and uh, uh, elders, which are um, which are the uh, group of uh, community. Uh, on one hand, those determinants decide about effectivity of functioning this safari lodge, and on the other hand, hand decide about tribal community and the elders' uh, support for this safari uh, lodge activity. Uh, we can point here uh, lodge business efficiency, uh, peripheral location, sustain cultural authenticity, maintain the natural environment, changes in traditional social rules and openness to learn um, or, or develop, and also a goodwill of the elders and uh, lodge perception uh, by the elders. Um, and as a conclusion, uh, we tried to emphasize the role of the elders during the presentation several times because, in fact, uh, this is the only interaction that occurs in the relationship there um, uh, is between elders and the lodge. And these interactions uh, are take, taking place through the mediation. There is uh, no interaction between the rest of the community and the lodge. Um, everything depends on the elders, and um, that is the key for the functioning of the lodge. Um, thank you for your attention, and uh, we really appreciate your time, and we'll be pleased to answer questions and uh, comments. Thanks very much for a very clear and comprehensive uh, presentation and and please uh, if you have any questions put them in the chat so that uh, at the end we can uh, uh, deal with those questions i would like to invite the final presenter sisa yes thank you thank you very much i'll just try and share my presentation is it visible to everyone it's visible. It's not okay. a full screen yet, but it's visible. Well, let me see how that full screen. Uh, let's see. Let me just maneuver this. Uh, and now is it still not full screen? No, but on the other hand, we can see it. So if you want to continue, it's also fine. All right. Now, thank you very much, Che. Um, for this presentation, uh, we are looking at the utilization of cultural heritage as a pull factor for African tourism. And we were looking at specifically, oh, sorry, let me introduce myself. My name is Sisa Nwangu, and uh, the co-author of this paper is one Dr. Shabalala. We are from the School of Hospitality and Tourism at the University of Mpumalanga. Uh, with that being said, oh, I think we should be full screen now. No, not yet. Slash. Uh, but maybe, maybe just yeah. At least uh, the slides are moving, so that's fine. Oh, all right, the slides are moving. Okay, we're in. Um, basically, this is the outline of the presentation. We'll have a small introduction with the aims of the study, which a little bit of literature review, and the methodology findings and uh, conclusions and recommendations. So basically, looking from looking from the topic. Uh, cultural heritage, according to literature, is the, is the legacy of cultural resources that are intangible, that, contribu that contributes uh, to a group or a society, so it gives them an, a form of identity. Uh, UNESCO further articulates that cultural, cultural le legacy, which uh, is, is something that we receive from the past, we, we get to enjoy in the present, but also uh, it, is, it is our duty to ensure that uh, we, we preserve it and pass it on to the next generations. The, four, the, 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 the two types of cultural heritage 
that we speak of, um, we talk about the tangibles and the intangibles. The tangibles will, 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 will focus mainly on building monuments, landscapes, books, something that you can touch, feel with your hands, uh, with your hands and see. Uh, and then we have the intangibles that, that speak to a communities. It's more like the software, something that is not necessarily seeable or touchable, but it is something uh, like storytelling, something like traditions of a particular group, uh, such something like the, 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 the knowledge that are encompassed within that particular group of people. And somewhere in the world, there's someone who is willing to travel uh, over the oceans to enjoy this type of uh, this type of offering that uh, Africa is 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 rich in, and uh, this person we need to ensure as 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 tourism in this continent that we can provide them with a service or a product that has meaningful that can provide meaningful uh, experiences for these type of tour tourists, and the type of tourists that we have. In this, in this, uh, in this sector of tourism, would be those that are purposeful uh, cultural tourists, and these are these are tourists that travel with the primary motive of ensuring that they will encompass themselves in 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 in, in a culture, uh, and then we have those ones that that travel merely for sightseeing. We have the 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 the, the serendipitous one. The serendipitous tourist is a tourist that does not initially travel for to a destination to 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 experience any form of 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 culture, but however they may come across an activity that in that uh, uh, encompasses them to take part in a in a in a in a in a cultural experience and they 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 develop this deep cultural experience during that. We have the more casual ones, and we have those that come into cultural uh, experience merely by by accident. But as a as a as 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 tourism people, we need to ensure that we are providing the necessary uh, uh, services to ensure. So the aim for this paper is to explore how we could use uh, cultural heritage as a pull factor for, for the, uh, the, the continent as, as a whole. It also focuses on the uniqueness and the high value of cultural heritage that, uh, that contributes to tourism offerings in the African continent and how these can be packaged, packaged and, uh, and, 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 and sold to, to, to targeted uh, cultural heritage tourism across the globe. Uh, the literature review is uh, as follows. Um, Ivanovich notes that culture is a, is, is a whole complex of distinctive spiritual, material, intellectual, emotional features that make up a society. And UNESCO attests to the, to the, to the aspect of intangible uh, cultural heritage as heritage that actually is not one that is um, uh, that is especially in Africa that is is written down. It's one that is transmitted from generation to generation, often via word of mouth. It's also worth noting that heritage is a source of inspiration, creativity, innovation uh, for contemporary and future uh, cultural products. Products, in addition. Um, Cultural heritage has a potential to, 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 to promote access to enjoyment and, and cultural diversity. But on the other hand, it is a significant uh, economic uh, contributor to the continent of, of Africa, as it has been articulated by speakers ahead of me. There we have the classifications of, on, of, of, of the different types of heritage that we find. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, on the on the side of cultural uh, on the ten, on the tangible side we'll have those that are movable and those that are immovable. Uh, with noting in terms of the immovable ones, we'll have your 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 some things that you can t 
take, pack up and put them in a, in a museum where uh, people from around the globe can enjoy. And then we have the immovable uh, heritage, which is your buildings, your monuments, your, 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 your archeological sites, something that cannot be moved, but it needs people to come to that, to that space and enjoy it. And then as we have spoken about the intangible cultural heritage, also there being uh, knowledge and, uh, and, and traditional skills and, and, and oral expressions, et cetera. Also, uh, it is worth noting that uh, this knowledge is not cast in stone. It is constantly uh, uh, evolving and, and is constantly recreated uh, by groups in response to, to the environment that they find themselves in um, with, with their interaction with nature and their history. So these, these, these will change over time, uh, but it also gives them a sense of identity and continuity. Uh, for instance, the African continent as a whole is one that is rich with cultural heritage, uh, born from the fact that we have so many um, people, so many cultures. If we talk about South Africa with their official languages, with the number of, of, of just cultural and different clans that are within, in, 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 in South Africa. But it's also with noting that mainstream tourism is not taking full advantage of what uh, of, of the of the different niches that you find within in 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 uh, in, in, in in cultural uh, tourism and the example that is close to my heart is in particular uh, indigenous food with indigenous food uh, authors note that it is essential to explore the opportunities to promote uh, food tourism, specifically because one can say that South Africa is a country that is rich in culinary tourism, but it's the lack of development and, and uh, I think it's the, it's the lack of development that hinders this uh, um, uh, uh, type of tourism from, from, from taking off because the, the, the general attitudes and the general notes are that this, this knowledge is, 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 is primitive, but in that primitive, that's where you find the notion of authenticity. So even the people in this, in that particular aspect, don't necessarily find value in it. So how can you promote it? But literature says promote it because there is a, there's a market for it. And that's how, and Durant also is of the view that uh, we need to utilize cultural cuisine as part of tourism uh, marketing. The methodologies which was followed, we, 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 we collected our, our data using uh, secondary. We use secondary data in, in, firm, in, in the form of Google Scholar to conduct the study. Uh, triangulation was uh, adopted in order to increase the credibility and validity. Also, content analysis was, 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 was used uh, for, for, for data analysis. The key findings are as follows in the interest of time, is that South Africa, Africa countries are in a position, a unique position to take advantage of cultural heritage. The findings indicate that countries should utilize the, the, the strengths that they have in, in, in cultural uh, uh, and cultural heritage as a pull factor in, in marketing, uh, uh, in, in their marketing strategy, both internationally and regionally, and target different groups of, tour, of, of, of cultural tourism. The, the findings further indicate that not all cultural resources can be regarded as attractions with tourism, with a tourism potential, and therefore, it is vital to ensure that these attra uh, attractions do conform to, to, to the requirements of, of being interesting, unique, provide an experience that can be consumed, uh, known beyond just the, the local community, but also be accessible and be able to take in the numbers that may, that may uh, try to use these, uh, uh, these uh, areas. Also, 
we must not, we must uh, over and above applications of cultural uh, strategy mix needs to be adopted. Um, and these include that we should be seem these uh, uh, cultural attractions, label them and make sure we are, we are not altering them and cluster them. And conclusions, identification of particular products and services such as cuisine, land, uh, cultural roots are essential. And we need to have uh, a, a manner in which we, we should incorporate them into a continental, not just for one country to, to benefit, but a, a continental tour package that uh, someone from China can utilize when they travel to South Africa, also have the same uh, 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 access to parts of, uh, of Botswana, Lesotho, Swaziland, and the likes. Uh, though destination, and the key people in ensuring this is destination marketers, tour operators, operators working together with the ministries to ensure the ministries of different countries to ensure that we can fully uh, utilize the opportunities that are at hand. The recommendations, identif let's identify these, uh, the, these products. Let's, let's, let's go and research our cuisine. Let's ensure that our landscape is proper and fit for our tourists to, to, to take advantage of. Um, and then we need to ensure that our marketers get on board and we need to ensure that our ministries intercontinental, I, I mean, inter, inter, in the region of Africa need to be working together to create these uh, 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 experiences that are, that, that are of value to, 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 to people that are traveling for the, for, the, for the purpose of cultural tourism. And with that being said, I thank you very much. Um, there is our reference list and Thank you, have a great Valentine's Day. Thank you very much for a very clear presentation, uh, which uh, leaves us with four presentations within an hour. Great, great job. Uh, there's only very little time for, uh, for questions, but I, I would like to start with one for um, uh, Justinia and uh, Thomas, uh, because you were referring to a private owned uh, resort which is, you said very little about this private enterprise and, and how it relates to the, to the broader project of the Desert Rose Lodge. Can you just expand a little bit on that? Please unmute. Uh, you mean about the owner of the, of the place itself, yeah? Yeah, yeah because, because a partnership is very much depending, of course, on who is the owner and, and how he is involved or not with the local community, et cetera. Okay, so the owner of uh, Desert Rose Lodge is a, a, a Kenyan European guy. Is a place uh, is is a person from Europe who's living who has been living in Kenya for more than thirty years, and he is the first uh, uh, tour guide who start to do the uh, commercial um, safaris um, um, uh, in in the high high end level uh, to the north of Kenya, especially to the to the area of uh, Lake Turkana. So uh, before he uh, he start running this lodge, he get very used to with uh, with the community there. So it start like uh, it it wasn't uh, like uh, the, the lodge was first and then the good relationship was second. It was like reverse. So first of all, he was building the good relationships uh, once he was traveling, living with those people for for many years, and then the idea comes out. Hmm. Okay. And and for second and related question, you, you were talking about this mediation between community and and um, and and the private owner. Uh, I, I, um, could also be my fault, but I was not very sure about. Who is doing this mediation? Who is in charge of this mediation? Uh, this mediation is uh, made by made through the um, representatives of the elders and the uh, owner. Okay, so they have a sort of um, trust yes. and partnership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Thanks very much. Are there any other questions? Uh, we would like to maybe uh, ask. Um, 
uh, 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 regarding the last um, uh, Mr. Sisa, yeah. Mr. Sisa, uh, uh, regarding the last presentation, because that was very interesting for us. I would like to ask uh, if, in your opinion, this uh, lack of development of of um, cultural tourism uh, comes out from the uh, lack of interest from the uh, foreign tourists or it it comes from a uh, lack of uh, a good system of uh, working on uh, promoting that uh, that kind of uh, tourism Sisa, are you there uh, thank yeah. you for the question uh, can i let dr shabalala the co uh, the co author of this one go please yeah but briefly, because okay. we are already past 12, so, okay. Uh, please, all right. please go ahead, thank, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. It's mainly on the development side in the, in, in, the, in the destination, not on the tourist side, because the tourists are here to consume. Therefore, if we develop those type of cultural heritage uh, uh, services, then we present them to the tourists, then the tourists can be able to consume. So mainly you can say it's more on the on the destination side, not on the tourist side. I hope uh, it summarizes. If maybe let's say you need to engage more, we can just uh, uh, share your details and we can be able to engage with you more of uh, the, 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 this platform. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Okay. Unfortunately, I've, I have to, uh, to uh, call the session to an end uh, because we have uh, another session coming up. Uh, and, and I suggest maybe for those who stay online, that you can after this session you also can uh, exchange ideas during the lunch break i assume the link will be open during the whole conference